Now we'll go to questions. This whole session will be de devoted to questions, I suppose. And so, uh, please. The question is going to be about miracles. So, um, in Islam there are miracles. And so what um, kind of attitude should Christians have to miracles in Islam and also in other religions? A, a, ver a very good question. Uh, first, I would just note that um, one of the uh, concerns some of the disciples of Muhammad had was that he was not, he did not perform miracles. Um, he, uh, uh, and they would talk about how Jesus, you know, the quote refers to Jesus resurrecting, uh, healing people and so forth. Muhammad was, was not a miracle working prophet in that sense. Muhammad's response to those who said that he uh, does not make do miracles was that the Quran itself is a miracle, that the Quran, the Quranic Arabic is so amazing that it can't be repeated, and that's the miracle. So that is held forth as 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 the miracle. Um, the um, um, Jesus made a comment at one time when he was with us that. Um, God sends his rain on the just and on the unjust. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the sustenance of life and so forth um, is, is a gift from God, whether we are righteous, whether we're in the way of the truth or not, God, uh, God blesses. And so we should, we should recognize that, that, that God is generous, extravagant in his love and his grace. Uh, it's not only, not only Christians who perform miracles. The other observation is that uh, miracle working powers uh, are not uh, all derived from, from God. God, God, God uh, permits it, uh, but um, within, uh, within the occult, for example, uh, miracles can be used very destructively. Uh, witchcraft is grounded in the notion of miracles, miracles of destruction, of death, you see. And so, um, with, within the, the Bible, uh, we don't uh, measure um, the truth or falsity of a movement just by miracles. The source of the miracles can be very uh, evil sources as well. So that's not a good measuring stick of truth or falsehood, uh, just miracles. You need to look much more than that. Um, but. Um, when miracles are performed uh, in the spirit of honoring God, I think we, uh, we always rejoice. At one point, uh, people were, were actually casting out demons um, at, when Jesus was ministering. And uh, the disciples said, oh, let's tell them to stop. And Jesus says, let them go, let them go. Um, we, uh, Jesus and his disciples were involved in kingdom ministries and he said that God God sends his reign on the just and the unjust. So let's not um, get too exercised about um, people who perform miracles. If salvation, uh, salvation is not necessary in Islam, and then uh, Jesus Christ is not uh, a redeemer, not a saver, and not a God, so what then is his mission? What, um, why was he born, according to Islamic understanding uh, of this? Yes, I didn't take very much time to talk about Jesus in Islam. Um, there's a lot written about him in the Quran, and some of it agrees with the biblical witness, some of it does not agree with, with, with the biblical witness. Uh, but when you read the accounts of Jesus, the, the references to him in the Quran, as well as in the, in the Hadith, some, some, some in, is found in the Hadith, and, um, and then of course in uh, the hymns and so forth about Jesus, we see a, a Jesus who is very much loved, uh, very highly respected, uh, who is so holy and so righteous that he doesn't really very much live among people. He's, he's in the caves and that kind of thing. Um, but he's not the savior. A Muslim theologian said, the Jesus of Islam is really in conflict with the, with the Jesus of the New Testament. That the Jesus of the New Testament is very involved in the uh, uh, in the in, in, in the in the life of, of, the, of his day. You know, very engaged. He's not often goes to the mountains to pray, but he is always involved. 
Um, and so, um, uh, and as you look at the overall picture, uh, Muhammad certainly is far more significant than Jesus. Uh, with it, within his Muslims will say all prophets are equal, but uh, as I read the Quran, I would say one is more equal than others, and that is Muhammad, uh, who is seen as the perfect example, the one whom all people should emulate. Um, so although Jesus does not have a saving role, as I would understand it, within the Quran, um, he, uh, he, is, he is respected, but not in the New Testament sense of the word. So our invitation to Muslims and to everyone is come and meet the Jesus of the scriptures that God has entrusted to us, the New Testament scriptures. That's our invitation. So, and the last question uh, will be about uh, Muslim Islamic eschatology. What uh, do Muslims say about uh, the end of the world? The, the eschatology. Yes. Here's a brief diagram of the view of history and eschatology. So we come from paradise to earth. And the reason we are sent to earth is for a time of testing. What is the test? The test is Islam. So God sends Islam down to Adam and to all the prophets, different prophets, which is the, which is the curriculum, that's the syllabus. And we need to subscribe to that syllabus well. At death, if we have passed the test, then we return to paradise. And so it's not a picture of history moving forwards towards uh, the kingdom of God, for example, as you have in the Christian movement, where history begins in Eden and moves forward toward this great city, which we talked about yesterday, described in the book of Revelation. It's a journey going forward to the fulfillment of God's kingdom forever and ever the, within, within this great city that he, is, that he is building. Within Islam, no, it's not that kind of movement. Within Islam, we come from paradise to return to paradise. And why have we come from paradise? To take the examination, to, which, is, which is Islam. That, that's, that's why we're sent down, you see. And so you don't have within Islam this, uh, this eschatological uh, movement towards the fulfillment of the kingdom. But you do have a judgment coming. And when the judgment day comes, then the whole world will be burned up. For there's no need for a world anymore because there's no more need for uh, judgment. The judgment has taken place. The judgment is described in sometimes horrible ways uh, within the Muslim traditions. Um, it's a fearsome time um, where uh, people are wondering what will happen as these books are open and God passes judgment. It's a dreadful, dreadful time. Um, and that's why so many Muslims are so concerned about saying their prayers faithfully and regularly because they want to pass the test and return to paradise. So the view of history and eschatology basically is a parenthesis. We come from paradise to return to paradise. And paradise is not described as, as the presence of the kingdom of God. It is described as the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. In the, in the Bible, in the eschaton, the kingdom is fulfilled. Within Islam, it is a very um, sensuous paradise, uh, a lot of pleasures which were denied on earth. Um, it's, it's, it's that sort of description, not, not the, the fulfillment of the kingdom. So we come from paradise to return to earth and return, and so come from and return. And this is the parentheses in which we live. I think that says it very, very well, that diagram on the biblical faith. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, a movement forward toward the grand day when Jesus will return again and his kingdom be fulfilled forever and ever. And he returns in judgment. There's certainly judgment there, but the emphasis is on the fulfillment of the kingdom. Some years ago, I was in a mosque and um, uh, the Muslims asked me this very question on the Christian side. They were describing eschatology on their side, where uh, the Iranians, for example, have this idea of Jesus coming back again, and uh, he will uh, 
kill all the pigs and uh, destroy all the crosses and he will establish Islam throughout the whole world uh, and then the final judgment will, will, will come. That, that sort of idea about, about Jesus within Islam. Um, so they asked me, in the Christian understanding, what, would, what will it be like when Jesus comes back? I say, come and visit our homes and churches and you will see that the end is already beginning now because God's kingdom, which will be fulfilled when Jesus returns again, is already happening in our families, in our lives, in our communities. I said, even the cows are happier uh, as we care for them in a godly way, uh, which blesses the cows. So they took me seriously on that. And a couple carloads of these Muslims came and spent some time with us in our churches there in the U.S. where we live, getting in touch with what it will be like, what it will look like when Jesus comes back again. Um, when I was in Iran on one of these dialogues why, uh, about, about eschatology, which all, all it was about this eschatology, which, which I've been describing here. And in the four, I was invited to give a talk about the Christian eschatology, about Jesus and his messianic reign to this group of Muslim theologians in Iran. And um, out in the foyer uh, was this video clip going round and round which said, Jesus is coming soon and the Mahdi with him. They think that, uh, that a Mahdi figure will come with Jesus and that Jesus and the Mahdi will work together to establish Islam around the world. And so they said, Jesus is coming soon and the Mahdi with him. Are you ready? Are you ready for him? And this video clip was going round and round and round. And in that setting, I was invited to speak to several hundred, maybe a couple thousand of these Iranian clerics about uh, the kingdom in, in, in Christian understanding and the fulfillment of the kingdom when Jesus returns again. It was uh, two rather dramatically different presentations. Yeah. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.